hetero means different sociability to become part of the social process, social activities. And here hetero is used for heterosexuality, interaction between two opposite sex in social environment, right. So, this is hetero sociability. This is also part of adolescence, most important part of adolescence. And this also relates with your school life, high school life. So, in this way, this module has a link with the previous module. We can understand them together. When an age group moves from elementary to secondary, so there is another parallel movement that is physical movement from asexual to heterosexual changes. In childhood, we are not aware of uh, sexual differences and sexual features, physical uh, changes, etc. But once we enter high school and adolescence, so we are fully aware of physical changes in ourselves. So, both stages from elementary to secondary and from asexual, a uh, before sexual means not sexual, this a uh, means not. Asexual to heterosexual, these two developments go side by side. Heterosexual group is hierarchical, definitely. If the society believes in uh, gender difference, and male domination, males are superior they, uh, to the uh, female. So, there is hierarchy. The gender order, it promotes this hierarchy. Gender order means the norms, the expectations. Society expects that this hierarchy should be maintained. Why? To get the society functional. This is the gender order that promotes it. And gender order is promoted and conveyed thoroughly at school during adolescence. Girls, now see how this gender order is reinforced, strengthened during school. Everything that happens in school would definitely create gender difference and that is fully organized and uh, interestingly the responsibility of this gender enforcement is given to the adolescents themselves. The institution, the family, the parents, they are behind it. Girls, for example, when they are at school, they are in a supportive role. There is some sports event. What would be their role? They would be sitting around the playground. They would be cheerleaders for boosting the team, for encouraging the players. And boys would be players. They would be at, at least the, the power. Uh, thing is attached with them during the sports event. In other school activities, girls would be doing behind the scene things. For example, they may be decorating the interior of the uh, hall where some function or activity is uh, to be held. So, uh, they may be fundraisers. But boys, they would be in front rows. They would be managers, they would be class representatives. See, so they would be in such kind of roles. They would, would be event organizers. Similarly, our school promotes gender difference, gender order. That is actually the aspiration of the society that schools should promote it. This is the aspiration of the society. 
So that's why everything that happens in school matches with that aspiration. So another activity is heterosexual couple. This word couple is very important. In couple, definitely one is male and one is female. And heterosexuality, this is desired by culture and by society. Every culture desires heterosexuality. There is no culture on this planet that favors, that does not favor heterosexuality. So how this feeling of being couple is institutionalized through choice of cutest couple of the year, for example, a competition is held in the school and the cutest and the most beautiful couple is selected. It is also promoted by sharing post-school lives of famous people, the alumni. They, they leave the school, they become actors, they become sportsmen, and uh, they achieve other uh, higher goals in their life successes. So their success stories are shared with the students. Similarly, homecoming activity, that is annual dinners for alumni. So there, kings and queens are selected by voting of the alumni. There is some jury, uh, they apply for this competition, and then uh, there is voting, and then announcement of the decision. The one is king and the other is queen. So this is also, in a way, very uh, visibly, you can say, promotion of heterosexuality. See this image of uh, such function where a student alumni of the school who has left the school and has joined some professional life, same is the case with the female girl standing by uh, that boy. So they were selected in some uh, homecoming function at a college or university campus uh, to promote this. Most important aspect of heterosexuality, heterosociability is that it happens in the whole age group. This is very important thing. Heterosexuality may be misunderstood as boy and girl friendship. No, 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 no. It is not that kind of thing. It is related with the whole age group. So, it brings change in the individual as a member of the group. An individual would do what the group would like him to do or her to do. This is the main center point to understand uh, here. Adolescents think themselves as a crowd. They are a community. They are a social group. And they have their own place and identity and autonomy. Autonomy from the teachers, from the parents, no, they feel themselves in an environment where they can make their own decisions, they, where they can take their own choices. We have called it heterosexual community of practice or heterosexual market in the previous modules. Uh, this idea is not new for you. We have already discussed it, but this time in this module, we are relating it with a new dimension of this relationship of language and gender. In school culture, heterosexuality, as I said, never means boy girl relationship. Rather, it is a peer control and visible behavior. If the peer, if the group, if the peers and the group favors your behavior, then it is acceptable. Otherwise, they would tease you. They would try to uh, desist you from uh, your behavior. That won't be uh, uh, in accordance with the norms and expectations of gender order. So they would resist it. The group would resist, resist it. Boys are expected, for example, to focus on masculine power. And if a person doesn't show masculinity and power, they, uh, they hoot at that person. So, uh, because it is not according to the gender order. And girls are expected to focus on the other side, on their personality, on their personal beauty and attractiveness. So, if some girl deviates from this, 
so definitely uh, they uh, that gun would also have to face reaction from the group. So this is how the group uh, maintains gender order. There are cliques in girls and boys. How this gender order is maintained? There are small groups within the boys, within the girls, and then uh, one group of the boys, one group of the girls. So, so two groups, and then within these two groups, further subgroups. So we call them cliques. These cliques they learn special kind of language. They give labels to each other. Why labels? We have talked about labels in some previous module. These labels they use to invite attention of the individual members of the group that they are not following gender norms. So they should come back to their roles. For example, one verbal strategy is that they start teasing such individuals who are deviant in their behavior, who are not conforming the gender. And other uh, strategy is that they offer compliments. If the individual members of the group, they follow the norms, the compliments would be sincere. If not, the compliments would be sarcastic, ironic. Tanziya hunge compliments. So we conclude that heterosexuality takes place at high school. High schools reinforce adult gender order through mixed activity when both sexes are involved. The group takes over the role of family and teachers. So here who maintains the gender order? The group. 